the whole message, but just this point that you brought out, Reverend Devonshire brought this out from this portion of scripture. And I've read it many, many, many times, never thought about it that way. It's amazing how God can do that, right? Yes, God can teach you something new. We can read a portion of scripture that we've read in the Bible many times, and we read it again. It's like, whoa, I didn't know that was in there. Yeah. Well, it didn't change. It's just that you grew and changed, and God showed you something different. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, go to Luke chapter 9. We're going to begin reading in verse 57. And it came to pass that as they went in the way, a certain man said unto him, Lord, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. You ever prayed that way? Mm -hmm. Oh, whoever get down and kneel down in prayer and say, God, I'll do whatever you want me to do. God says, okay, <laughs> we'll see. Yeah. And then maybe God tells us that he wants us to do something. He's like, well, I didn't know you were going to ask me to do that, God. And you said whatever. Okay. Thank God we can do what God wants us to do. Okay. What did he say? He said, man said unto him, Lord, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. Jesus said unto him, foxes have holes, and the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man had nowhere to lay his head. Now, he wasn't saying that he was homeless. Okay. He just... As the Bible teaches us, we don't have any continuing city. We look for one to come. This world is not our home. We're not here just to be complacent in this world. Okay, We have a purpose as we were preaching this morning. We'll be kind of going along the same uh, thought this evening. Okay, We as a church, and pe people that are saved, God left us here for a reason. That reason is to be a witness for the Lord. Amen? To, to help win other people to the Lord. Okay, foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. And he saith unto him, another, follow me. But he said, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. Now, from what I understand, he wasn't saying that his father was dead. Okay, what he was saying was, after my father dies, then I will come and follow you. Okay? Jesus said unto him, let the dead bury their dead, but go thou and preach the kingdom of God. And another also said, Lord, I will follow thee, but let me first go and bid them farewell, which are at my home, at, at my home, at my house. And Jesus said unto him, no man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. Now we want to turn, okay, we want to go to Mark chapter 1. And we want to be in Mark chapter 1, and we're going to read here beginning in verse 16. Okay, are we ready? Okay, Mark chapter 1, beginning in verse 16. Now as he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And Jesus said unto them, now remember what happened recent, earlier in the other Bible setting that we read. Okay? All of those guys wanted to do something else first. So let's look at this difference here. Okay? As he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew and his brother casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And Jesus said unto them, Come ye after me, and I will make you become to become fishers of men. And straight away they forsook their nets and followed him. And we had gone a little further thence, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, who also were in the ship mending their nets. And straight away he called them. And they left their father Zebedee in the ship with the hired servants and went after him. And they went into Capernaum, and straight away on the Sabbath day he entered into the synagogue and taught. Okay, so we're going to stop right there. And we're going to use these two portions of Scripture. Now, uh, this morning, okay, uh, we, we preached okay, about a message entitled, It's Your, it's your Call. So thank God, you know, we have a decision to make. Are we going to follow God? Do what God wants us to do? That's what I want to do. Okay? Well, that's our decision to make, and I hope we make the right decision. But tonight, we want to preach with the help of the Lord on God's call. Because God is the one that has called us, brother and sister. Okay, let's go ahead and look to the Lord in prayer. We're going to ask his blessing upon this service tonight. 
And Reverend Coker, sir, will you pray, please? Wonderful Father, I come before you in Jesus' name. Again, we thank you for this time of worship. Father, let your hand rest upon Pastor Polk as he preaches your word. God, move in a mighty way tonight. We pray for Wanda again, Lord, that you'll continue to strengthen her and be with her. She and Devin both, Lord, uh, help, help them, Lord. And we also pray for Sister Poe, continue to undertake for her. And Father, again, give the, our brothers and sisters traveling grace and mercy, Lord. Keep them safe on the highway and bring them back home safe. In his name, amen. 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 Well, I don't know if you picked up on it or not. When we read out of these two different portions of Scripture, okay, uh, first of all, out of Luke chapter 9, <coughs> and then we read to you out of Mark chapter 1. Okay, and the first portion that we read to you, we noticed some people that Jesus called them to follow him, and they were reluctant. One of them wanted to wait until after his father passed away. The other one wanted to go and to uh, bid farewell to his family, however long that would have taken him to do that. Okay, but Jesus wanted them to come and to follow him. Okay, we do not even know the names of those people that he was talking to. We don't hear anything about them anymore in the word of God. On the contrary, he came to Peter and Andrew and he came to James and John and he told them to follow him and their response to the Lord was a little different. Yeah. Okay, they weren't looking to do something else first, but they told the Lord, they, they left what they were doing and they began to follow the Lord. And we hear a lot about them, don't we? We know about the sons of thunder, James and John. We know about uh, Peter and Andrew. We know Peter being a, an apostle. And we see the books that he wrote. We see the books, brother sister, written by John and by, by James in the word of God. We know they followed the Lord. Thank God. You know, we can follow the Lord. God calls us, doesn't he? God calls us to follow him. Okay, In whatever, whatever aspect that God wants us to. You know, people wonder many times, and, and as a pastor, you get asked the question, uh, you know, pastor, what? I, I don't really know what God wants me to do. Well, I, I may not know either, unless God reveals it to me, unless God tells me that, that he, he uh, has some, some uh, plan for somebody's life. I'm not going to know either. The thing to do is to ask God, God, what do you want me to do? We can think about the apostle Paul when he was on his way to Damascus. Okay, God intervened in his life, and God stopped him because he was going in the wrong direction. He was thought he was doing right. He thought he really thought he was doing God a favor, but he wasn't doing what God wanted him to do. On the contrary, he was fighting against what God wanted. Well, it's just when God showed him that he was fighting against him, that he was kicking against the pricks, as Jesus said, his response to the Lord was, what will thou have me to do? What do you want me to do, Lord? And that ought to be our prayer. Jesus prayed that way. We can read about him in the Garden of Gethsemane. And we know that he said, Lord, if this cup can pass from me. But he said, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Brother and sister, we can, we can come to that same place in our life when we're willing to tell God, God, it's whatever you want in my life. God, you have a plan for my life. We may not understand what it is. Others may not understand what it is. But brother and sister, God knows what he wants from us. And God can absolutely help us and reveal to us what his plan is. And brother and sister, God can help us as we grow. You know, we're talking about the word of God and how we read the Bible many, many times. And we read something that we've already read. And we see something new in it. It's not that it's new. It's not that somebody came along at night and wrote something else in our Bible. It's the, it was always there, but it's been revealed to us by the Holy Spirit because we have grown in God, in his grace, and in his knowledge. Well, it's the same way of God revealing his will to us. God maybe will reveal a little bit to us and not give us detail. Brother and sister, God is waiting to see how we're going to respond. Are we going to be faithful in the little things? If we're faithful in the little things, then we will be faithful in much. But God, brother and sister, expects you and I to walk before we can run. Amen. Yes. Amen. 
Amen. Do you understand what I'm saying tonight? Yeah. Now, we, we understand this. I think all of us uh, have been in positions where we had to train people. Somebody new on the job. Somebody new to the trade. You don't start them out doing the most complicated, difficult thing. Right. You start them out doing the easy things. And you see how they do. Okay? You see how they perform. Maybe, maybe you let them nail some boxes up. Okay? <laughs> maybe you put these boxes up. Nail them up. Maybe you let them... Let them set the uh, the the, the uh, washer box. Set that up, okay? And, and to get that all set up, and put put these you, uh, get these uh, holes drilled so we can put these spigots in and and so forth and so on. Drill some holes so I can run some copper through that wall over there. Whatever I need to do, man. If they mess that up, they got your holes going all like this. <laughs> Maybe you think, well, you know, before I get them to drill any more holes, I got to teach them how to drill holes straight, right. okay? I can get them, get them doing that right before I get them on to anything more difficult. Well, it's not any different with God, brother and sister. God, God gives us things to do in our life. And when we show God that we're willing to learn and we're willing to grow and we're willing to do things God's way, you know, that is important. Yeah. Doing things according to the code. Are you here? Amen. Okay. We, we don't want it to fail. We don't want it to to be turned down, we wanted to be accepted, brother and sister, of Almighty God. Maybe we can think about Cain, who wanted to do it his own way. But God didn't want him to do it his own way. God simply wanted him to follow the instructions that he had already given them. That's why Abel's sacrifice was accepted and Cain's was rejected. But God's not looking for us to answer his call our own way. God is looking for us to do what the Lord wants us to do. And when we're willing to do that, and we show that to God, brother and sister, we show God, I'm willing to do what you want me to do, God, then God can absolutely cause us and help us to be able to do more. You gotta walk before you can run, brother and sister. People wonder what God wants them to do. God, the Bible tells us, he won't allow us to be tempted above that which we are able. Isn't that a wonderful verse of scripture? Amen. That is very comforting to me. God's not going to let more come upon me than I can handle. God's not trying to destroy me. As we read, he told them, follow me and I will make you. I will make you fishers of men. I'm not trying to destroy you. I'm not trying to put more upon you than you can handle. Brother, sister, God won't allow us to be tempted above that which we are able. With a temptation, God will make a way to escape that we are able to. To bear it, brother and sister. God is able, brother and sister, to help us as we look to him. People wonder what God wants us to do. He told them, follow me and I will make you. He didn't tell them right off the bat where they were going to go and what they were going to do. He didn't tell Peter, oh yeah, Peter, follow me. Oh, by the way, they're going to lock you up. I just want to go ahead and throw that in there and let you know what you can expect, Peter. They're going to lock you up. You guys are going to get beat up. Uh, they're going to crucify you upside down, Peter. Hmm? He didn't tell them that, brother and sister. He did later on. He said, "He said, uh, now you go where you want to go, but there's going to come a time somebody's going to take you where you wouldn't go, right. where you would not. Okay? And they would. They would take him and put him to death. But, it, but brother and sister, that wasn't until later on. Okay? But God told him simply to follow him. God's intentions. Brother and sister, for them was for them to grow. The whole idea of following, brother and sister, isn't, isn't uh, having to know every detail of where we are going. That's where our faith comes in. What about Abraham? Abraham didn't say, God, you got to give me an itinerary. Right. I want to see an itinerary from Priceline with all the details on it. <laughs> where do I pick up my tickets? Where am I getting a rental car, God? What's my flight number before I leave off out of here on this trip? I want to know where I'm going, how I'm going to get there, what time I'm arriving, and by the way, what class am I flying? Yeah, right. Well, he was going, brother and sister, he was going on foot class. He was walking, yeah. okay? He didn't even know where he was going. Yeah. But we know that he had faith in God because when God told him to go, brother and sister, he left. And he began to walk, brother and sister, or where God began to direct him, even though he didn't know where he was going. Right. And he had faith in Almighty God. You know, uh, I, and, uh, Junior can relate to this. He was 
a student here at U of A. Okay, you know what? A lot of times we don't know because we need to grow. We and, and, and as we said, God doesn't put more upon us than we can bear. Okay, and I and I understand that, like freshmen in in, uh, in college. Okay, there are basic courses that they give them. Okay, they don't really give them specific courses. They give them basic courses like uh, you know some English and some other things that they have to do. There are all kind of common courses that you need for any major. Why do they do that? Because they know that those young men are going to change their mind. Yeah. <laughs> huh? There's some basic things that they let them do. They don't, they don't, for the most part, they don't, they may change their, their uh, idea of what they want to do two or three times before they figure out what they actually want to major in. Mm -hmm. But let's just go ahead and let them get the basic things done. Well, you know, brother, sister, we may not know, and God gives us some basic things to do when we until we can figure out what it is that God wants us to do. Amen. Yes. You didn't start out being a pastor. Okay, God had me working uh, as a helper for many, many years. Okay, helping and and uh, actually was just helping uh, around the Bible seminary, the Bible college, and uh, God eventually changed my calling to going to be a pastor, okay? But it didn't start out that way. Brother and sister, we, we are given basic things by God. But when we are following God, it doesn't matter, does it? It doesn't matter. Let's go ahead and, and, and just follow God and let God begin to direct us. Let's get those basic things nailed down. Let's get that, that basic knowledge of, of, of God and, 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 and walking with God. Come on now. A prayer life established, learning the Bible, walking in the Spirit. Man, I've got these basic things. I'm getting these basic things nailed down in my life. I'm, I'm passing in these things. Well, that's wonderful. God's going to help you to continue to grow. It doesn't matter where he's leading, brother and sister, as long as we are following God. It may take time for God to show you what eventually he wants you to do. Just keep following God. Keep doing those basic things that God wants you to do. Be faithful in those small things, brother and sister, because when you are following God, not only does it not matter where he's leading, as long as he is the one that is leading, it doesn't matter what you're doing, whether it's sweeping a floor, whether it's helping somebody, whether it's being a pastor, whether it's being whatever God wants you to be. As long as I am a member of the body and in that body, the way that God wants me to be. Amen. You know, God wants me to be an elbow. I want to be an elbow. I don't want to try to be a knee. Okay? God wants me to be a thumb. I'll be a thumb. Jim? Jim said, I, I could use another thumb right about now. <laughs> no, he's got a good thumb. We pray for him. Father, help our brother. Heal his thumb in Jesus' name. Okay? Thank God, brother, sister, God, this be what God wants us to be. Because when we are following the Lord, it just doesn't matter. You know, when we, we, we gave you the example of somebody working for us and we begin to teach them, it doesn't matter if, the, if they tell you, hey, go sweep up those wood chips. that we drill all those holes. Go sweep, up, go sweep all that mess up. Let's keep this place clean. Okay? I don't want to come behind you and have to be tripping all over kind of stuff and all this. It's easier to work that way. If that's what the journeyman wants me to do, then I'm going to go grab a broom and I'm going to start sweeping up wood chips. Okay? Because he's teaching me. Well, the Lord is teaching us, brother and sister. Whatever he wants us to do is important. Now, we're not there yet, but we're going to be there in a few chapters in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 in our Bible study. And we're going to learn, brother and sister, that we're all members of the same body and every member is important to the body. If we were all the same thing, it wouldn't be a body, would it? Right. Well, if we're talking about being an elbow, if you had a whole stack of elbows up here, that wouldn't be a human body. That would be a stack of human elbows. Okay, that would be kind of weird. But it's not. It's a couple of elbows and a couple of wrists and a couple of hands and a couple of feet and a couple of knees and everything else. And God made it that way, brother. Such sister, where God made his body, his church, to have different members. And all those members of the same are, are part of the same body. Brother and sister, thank God. God is teaching us. He's showing us. 
that every part is important there. In chapter 12, let's not look down on another part because it's not the part that we are. We need every part. God needs every one of us. Whatever God wants you to do is important. Amen. It is important. Let's, let's look here. So 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 through 11. The Spirit works all the gifts, but there are different ones. There are different gifts. The Spirit works the gifts. People say things like, I have the gift of healing. No, you don't. The Spirit has the gift of healing. I have the gift of knowledge. No, you don't. The Spirit has the gift of knowledge. And he works it severally as he wills. Are you here? If somebody says they got the gift of healing, I like this illustration. I've heard it many, many, many times. Okay, go down here, right up the street here, St. Mary's. Go in there and empty that place out. You got the gift of healing. So the Spirit of God has the gift of healing, and he uses it through people. We are to give God the glory. They're God's gifts, brother and sister. Okay? And he uses them through us as he wills. The Spirit works all the gifts. Every different gift is worked by the Spirit. Verse 12 through 14 of 1 Corinthians 12, we're all part of the body. It's one body. We all, there's some things that were different, but there's some things that are the same. We all have the same salvation. Yes. Huh? You don't have a different salvation than somebody else. We all have the same Holy Ghost baptism. Amen. You're not baptized with a different Holy Ghost than somebody else. We have the same word, brother and sister. We have the same Lord. There's one Lord. There's one Spirit. There's one baptism. Are you here? Amen. Okay, it's, we're all part of the same, brother and sister. Though we are different, there are things that, that we have that are the same. We go on. Verse 15 through 17, no matter what part we play, we are all important to the body. Verse 18, God put us doing what he wants, not what we want. Amen. That's important. It's what God wants us to do. If we all had the same ministries, Brother and sister, it, it would not be complete, okay? But we need every everyone doing their part. These less glorious jobs we learn in verse 23 to 27 are necessary, and they deserve more honor. But the bottom line to all of it, brother and sister, that we, all the members, should have the same care one for another. Right. We're, getting, we're near the end of chapter 12. What happens in chapter 13 of 1 Corinthians, I show you a more excellent way. And he begins to talk about love. We're to have love, brother and sister. That is the most important thing. So one is called to do this. Another is called to do something else. Another something else. Brother and sister, we're all members of the same body. Let's have love one to another. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples if you have love one to another. The more excellent way is love. Without love, we are nothing, brother and sister. So many times, so many times, brother and sister, uh, people focus, and this is what the Corinthian church was doing. They were focusing on these gifts. They were focusing on these different things, and they weren't even having love one to another. They were wrong, brother and sister. We've got to have love. Thank God. A true Christian loves his brother. Thank God, brother and sister. It's not about what this one's done or what the other one's done or what I've done or what you've done. It's about what Jesus has done for all of us. And he's made us all part of the same family. You know, we call one another brother and sister. We are family. We, are, we have the same father. We have the same Savior. We're saved the same way. We're filled with the Holy Ghost the same way. One is not better than the other. We may be different, but brother and sister, we are to have love one to another. Amen. And I got, I've got three brothers and four sisters and my mom and dad. There were 10 of us living in that three-bedroom house, a room for the girls, a room for the boys, and a room for mom and dad, and one bathroom. Oh, well, right. Uh-oh. With four sisters. You know, there had to be some love, and we'd be killing each other. Okay? Well, you know what? Thank God for the love of the family of Almighty God. Thank God, brother and sister. Because when we are following Christ, we are following Jesus, brother and sister. He is love. 
And we are to walk in love. We are to love one another as he has loved us, brother and sister. We are to forgive one another the way that Jesus has forgiven us. He's not holding a grudge against us for our past sin. He's, he's put it away. He's forgotten about it, brother and sister. He's put it away as far as the east is from the west. Why do we carry things around? Let it go. Okay, you got to let things go. Okay? When we're following Jesus, brother and sister, it just doesn't matter. It doesn't, it, it doesn't matter where God is leading. It doesn't matter what God wants us to do. It doesn't matter what's next. It does, I'm not going to worry about it because God is in control. My goodness, all I got to do is look back since the time God has saved me. He's kept me. He's blessed me. Hasn't he? He's fulfilled his word to me. He's not going to stop. Why am I worried about the future? The same God of my past, the same God that saved me and has kept me, is the same God of my future. Amen. He's kept me all this time. Can he keep me the rest of the way? Yes, he can. Yeah. You know, the devil's not some boogeyman that's going to come and get you. He's got to come through Jesus. Yes. Yeah. And he's already tried that. And I don't want to leave Jesus. Amen. I want to stay with him. I want to continue to follow him. So it doesn't matter where he's leading. I'm just following him. Yeah. I'm doing like the Bible tells me to do. Looking unto Jesus. Amen. The author Amen. and the finisher of our faith. Well, don't you see all these problems? Don't you see this over here to the left or to the right? No, I'm not taught to look to the left or the right. I'm taught to look right on. Yes. I'm looking at Jesus. I'm following him. Yes. I'm not going to get distracted by all of these other things. I'm not going to let them bother me or cause me to have fear in my heart. Yes, sir. Following the Lord. Yes. He is leading. I am following Brother and sister, thank God. God has a plan. And you know, we are, we are taught in the word of God, Romans chapter 12. We can go to Romans chapter 12. And we, we learn there, beginning in verse 1, he said, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Okay, God wants you to be a living sacrifice. He wants you to live for him. As we've said many times, you know, people say things like, I would die for God. Great, we live for God. God wants you to live for him. Yes. Okay, God wants us to live for him, brother and sister, to be a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service. But he doesn't stop there. He goes on and he tells us, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Brother and sister, we can absolutely learn what the will of God is for our life, we can follow it. We're not trying to be conformed to what the world says. Right. We're not trying to, to, brother and sister, be like everyone else. I'm allowing God to change my mind. I'm allowing God, brother and sister, to, to affect my thinking, to, to cause me to have faith in him. Right. Okay? I've got faith in God. I believe God. Amen. I'm not like these, you know, people are absolutely absurd. You hear people make comments like, you know, I, I read something in somebody's comment. The other day, they were talking about this situation that's going on in Israel and how they were just attacked by Iran and all this stuff. Man, if you can't see the Bible being fulfilled before your eyes, you are absolutely blind. Yeah. Russia's right there on their border mm -hmm. in Syria. Turkey is right up there talking trash to. Mm -hmm. Okay? There is Iran attacking them with a bunch of rockets and drones. All you got to do is go study the Bible. And we see who attacks them in the Bible. Yeah. Things have to work that way. Things are playing out just like the Bible declares. You can go study human history and it matches up with the Bible. Yeah. You know, there are a lot of Iranian people that love the Jews. Do you know why? Because there really was a Queen Esther who lived yeah. in uh, Persia, which is Iran. Okay, that, that, that uh, made a stand in her life for God. And that evil Haman was destroyed, brother and sister. God, the, 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 all of this is human history. Mm -hmm. People make stupid comments like, oh, you know, I don't, that's some fairy tale about your, your make-believe friend. My, my friend is not make-believe. Yeah. He is very real. Yes. He has controlled the events of creation mm -hmm. since he created it. Right. It's all in the word of God. Go study it. 
Huh? If you don't, if you're not a religious person, go study secular history and then go study the history that's written about in the Bible. They match up perfectly. Kingdoms arose, kingdoms fell, right. just like it's written in the Word of Almighty God. Amen. You have to be an absolute fool not to believe in God. Right. Do you think we just somehow uh, appeared out of nowhere? We, we evolved from amoebas. Why are there still amoebas? Where's the half amoeba, half a man guy hanging out at? Or is the missing link? No, the missing link is between your ears. Okay? There is a God in heaven. Amen. It ain't, I don't know how I got off on that, but anyway, that's not wisdom. That's foolishness mm -hmm. to deny what's right in front of our faces, what we can see. You know, these ladies just went up to the Grand Canyon. How do you think that big old ditch got up there? Yeah, really. <laughs> because there was a flood, just like the Bible says. Yeah. How do you think the Great Lakes got up there in the middle of a uh, top between Canada and the U.S. and that big expanse of land? How did those big old bodies of salt water get up there? Mm -hmm. Because there was a great flood. Mm -hmm. Okay, just like God's word says, brother and sister. Okay, there's so much evidence. I've been, I've been on top of hills and dig around and find a seashell. <laughs> Ooh, how did that get there? Huh? Because just like God said, okay, you can study different cultures. Native Americans, they they got stories of there being a flood. You know why? Because there was a flood. Yeah. Just like the word of God declares, brother and sister, we're not to be conformed to this world, but we're to be transformed by the renewing of our mind that we may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. For I say to the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly. As God had dealt to man, every man, the measure of faith. Whereas we have many, many members in one body, let's not get the big head because God saved us, because God is doing something. We ought to be over. Yeah. God is the one that dealt us the measure of faith. God is the one that had grace. What have been like, wow, praise God. God had grace on me. Yeah. Huh? God let me hear his word. God let me hear the truth. Amen. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Yes. I thank God that I heard enough about the Lord as a little kid that when that old bozo teacher in the fifth grade told me that we evolved, I looked at him and I said, no, we didn't. <laughs> God made us. Yeah, they sat me in the corner, but it didn't change the fact that God made us, brother and sister. <laughs> and I still believe it. And no, I wasn't saved. But God allowed that seed to be planted, planted in my cranium when I was a little kid. And I knew it was true. Yes. It, the word of God, even as a little kid, it bore witness. Mm -hmm. The spirit of God bore witness in my little old soul that that was true. That we came from God. Amen. And God by the Holy Ghost is still doing that, brother and sister. I don't care if somebody claims to be an atheist. I can testify that there are no atheists in Fox Hope. Mm -hmm. And there's no atheists in planes that are going down either. Mm -hmm. huh? How are you cursing somebody that don't exist? Yes, sir. Get them mad enough, they'll curse God. Hey, hold, hold on. Where'd that come from? I thought there was no God. You didn't say anything against Buddha. Right. You didn't see anybody curse Buddha? You never heard it. Who do they always curse? Jesus. Yeah. God. People know it's inherent. Yes. Okay? God put it in us. Mm -hmm. Okay? Brother and sister, people know. We know. Hey, we need to be humble. Mm -hmm. Okay? He went on, and I'm getting ready to close, Reverend, if you're prepared to come up and play something. Mm -hmm. What are you getting at, Pastor? God has called us. Yes. It's God's call. Mm -hmm. Let's answer that call from God. That call to be what he wants us to be. Listen to this. For as we have many members in one body and all members have not the same office. So we being many are one body in Christ and everyone members of one another having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given us whether prophesy let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith our ministry, let us wait on our ministry. He that teacheth on teaching, he that exhorteth on exhortation, he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity, he that ruleth with diligence, he that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. Whatever God wants us to do, brothers and sisters, whatever God has called us to do, 
Let's do what God wants us to do. It's God's call. Tonight, as we bow our heads and we close our eyes in reverence to the Lord, we're members of his body. I'm not going to tell him where in the body to put me. That's his call. But if God wants you to do so, I pray you can do it. As he begins to sing, begins to play, we're going to come and pray. What a wonderful thing. Like Abraham, like others through the word of God, Isaiah, Elisha, God has called us. Ruth, Esther, Deborah, God has called us. Others have answered the call throughout human history. Tonight, will we say yes to Jesus? Let us come in prayer. God bless you tonight is our prayer.